So now we're going to look at the NOT gate. We got an integrated circuit right here. It's called a hex Schmidt trigger inverter. So inverter when it comes to digital electronics is the same as a NOT gate. Uh, for power it's taking a DC voltage usually of lower voltage and making an alternating current you know like 120 volts or something like your wall outlet. Um, but in case just be aware inverters for digital means that you take a higher voltage that is coming in if that's the signal then it will output a low uh, voltage. If you got a lower voltage coming in it will output a high voltage so um, higher voltage. So uh, that's the NOT gate there. Higher input, low output, uh, lower input, uh, high output right there. And um, these ones and zero can mean many things. So in this uh, aspect, we have the output. If it's high, it's as close to 5 volts as the integrated circuit can get. And if it's low, it's as close to 0 volts as the integrated circuit can get. So now, when you hear Schmidt trigger, that means the circuitry has hysteresis. So uh, the input right in the middle usually is not high or low. It could be either high if that was what it was last put into or it could be low if that's what it was last put into. That way you don't have just a very slight voltage change right at a specific point that keeps changing the output high and low. You got a middle ground region where the input could be either high or low. So now, of course, before you build the circuit, you want to check the data sheet. So I haven't done that in a long time. I'm just going from the diagram I drew out here. But always check the data sheet for yourself. You have to power the integrated circuit, of course. Positive supply to uh, pin 14 right there. You can see there's six, uh, uh, three inputs, three outputs, six total pins. And then so that's got to be number seven uh, right there. Actually, 14. Work away down one to six. And then seven is the ground pin. Jump across work your way up, 14 is the positive supply. So of course you always gotta power it. There you can see it's not shown on the schematic. Some schematics may show the uh, positive and negative voltage. We're gonna use uh, five volts, but uh, the one I drew did not, and I believe most will not, but you always gotta power the integrated circuit. And um, often there'll be a part number, 74, uh, this is the HC version, 14. So it'll probably say 74 HC, 14 above it. I did not write it there. Um, so you can, just look for whatever integrated circuit will work for your circuit. Um, that's the main thing. Now, we have the uh, power supply right there. Positive 14 and then uh, 7. Uh, the negative supply, ground right there. You notice we got uh, these jumpers. These are the inputs that we are not using. You don't want to leave them floating. Again, look at the data sheet for the best device. But you can go either positive or negative. You'll be alright. That helps stabilize. Uh, the integrated circuit. We're going to use the number 1, A, which is uh, input, and then Y, which is output over there. So, got to make sure you pay close attention to that. You want to tie unused inputs. You always want to have these inputs to have a, a, a voltage on them. We're going to get to that in a little bit. And um, the outputs, you can leave floating. You want to leave floating when you're not using them. So, we're only going to be using the uh, output for number one, the top left right there. So typically, I like to get to the uh, outputs uh, first when it comes to wiring up the components. We can sync or source a maximum of uh, 25 milliamps of current per output, uh, but there's a total of 50 milliamps of current. So if uh, you're using more than two, you gotta limit their current below 25 milliamps of current, uh, cause three of them would be 75 milliamps of current and so on. So I'm gonna put the blue LED, long lead the anode positive supply, um, of course there's no power applied yet, and then short lead the cathode down a spot. I'm swapping positions there, but I'm making sure that the LED is facing the right way when it comes to the positive supply versus the output. It will light up when the output's low, connected to ground as good as it can, and uh, take a 1000 ohm resistor, and the uh, very top one is the, uh, output or the input I mean and uh, so the output is right below it as you can see there uh, input above output and uh, that's our blue LED so now when the output is high as close to 5 volts as it will go I like to use a red LED to light up in that case and uh, so we're gonna grab that and again I'm gonna swap the position of the LED and the resistor versus what I wrote on the schematic. So long lead the anode is up on top, short lead the cathode is going to the negative supply via that jumper once we apply power. 
220 ohm resistor, much lower than the 1K, because the red LED is not near as bright as the blue LED at the same current. So we want to make sure it gets more current so that its brightness gets to about the same as the blue LED. So now, all we need is an input. We're going to use a manually controlled input. You wouldn't really do this in a practical circuit, but it's good for getting used to how this uh, circuit works. So, any case, it's a resistive element across the uh, two uh, end terminals there of about 10,000 ohms. These are not uh, spot on uh, 10,000. They usually vary a little bit, but it's probably a little bit more than 10,000. And then a wiper that slides across it to make a voltage divider. You give a voltage to the input. It just looks at that voltage. No current goes in or out other than a little bit leaks through, um, but practically no current uh, flows through. So there we got it. That will be a high enough uh, input right there. Middle ground region, which could be either high or low, and then a uh, low input there. Again, that middle ground region is going to be whatever it was last put into. And now we will apply power. One thing, I was recently doing uh, something else where I needed relatively high current. And uh, so our maximum current was rather high. I'm going to limit it to 20 milliamps of current, which I can stop right there. And this is set to measure a current. We could look at the voltage, but as long as we don't exceed, try to exceed 20 milliamps of current, um, it's uh, more helpful to see the current we're getting. So trim pot is to the positive supply. I just did that on purpose. I want a high input. A blue LED should light up instantly, although something... Uh, Strange might happen right when we connect power, but nope, it uh, it lit right up. So um, you never know right when you apply power um, if you know it has like a preference or something. But there you can see right there, high input, low output. If I uh, turn this, uh, I'll use the screwdriver. It's a little less uh, blocking and a um, little less uh, blocking your view. So uh, about one milliamp of current flowing the, through the blue LED, approximately. And uh, there we go. Now you can see red LED, much more current is flowing uh, right there. And hardly any current flows through the uh, uh, trim pot. It's 10,000 ohm uh, trim pot right there. So if you had 10 volts, there'd be about a milliamp of current flowing through. It's probably about half of a milliamp of current. Um, but in case, there you can see we go high enough blue LED, low enough uh, red LED. But here you can see I'm moving very slowly to uh, jump between those two spots uh, right there. We have a middle ground region right there. So it's not huge, but it's a, uh, you know, fair enough region where if you have a slightly altering uh, voltage in that middle point, it's not going to keep bouncing uh, between the two of them. You need a, you know, somewhat significant change uh, right when it uh, flips from one to the other. You got to go back uh, a fair amount extra before it will, uh, in this case, go high enough to uh, set the output low and then low enough set the output high. We kind of last connection there so it probably got like a weird voltage it was in that hysteresis range so even though it flipped its state um but yeah any case uh, that's about it hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos i posted on the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot i'll see you in the next video